Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for showing up. Got a question for you. Got a question for you. You can tell me down below. What's your favorite way to switch out a deck of cards? Do you have a way? You have a way to switch out one deck for another. Many a magician have tried to solve this problem. Case in point today, we got a new trick hitting the shelves. I'm here to open the box and tell you exactly what you get. This is Pro Deck Switch from Pierre Velarde. And uh, I will say, got this from Murphy's Magic Supplies. If you purchase this for yourself, 50 bucks, $50. And what does it do? It switches one deck for another. Uh, tabled, seated, right? You're at a table, you're uh, doing a trick. You've got your deck and your tuck box side by side. And then in the flash, spectator was barely paying attention. They could barely see it. A lightning streaks across the sky and the two switch places. Suddenly the tuck box is on the left and the deck is now on the right. You have secretly switched the cards and no one is the wiser. What? is the pro deck switch. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's say you pay your 50 bucks to your favorite Murphy's Magic Supplier. What are you gonna get? Uh, it's a small-ish box, small-ish box, because really uh, you're just getting the, the gimmick, okay? You're getting the gimmick, which is a tuck case, but it's made out of a uh, hard, thick plastic. It's a deck shell, in effect. You're gonna get the parts to make the deck shell work. We'll talk about that. And you are getting a amazing clear plastic Sharpie marker holder. Because, you know, when you're sitting at the table and you always wondered where to put your Sharpie marker, now uh, they've given you a little holder for your Sharpie marker. Is it what I thought? I had no clue what to think. No clue. Um, I think I've only reviewed... Uh, two of these before in the past. I think I've reviewed a deck switch gimmick and then reviewed a, uh, a download that taught different deck switch techniques. Certainly, you have those options. This is a gimmick, right? This is a gimmick. Uh, is it well made? It's well made. It is well made. Um, I didn't have any problem with the way it was constructed. What I had a problem with, I, I had a problem with its design. <laughs> The design itself, you know, it's one thing to say it was constructed well, but the other thing to say is it's impractical in design. So this is only going to work uh, on a black mat. Okay, you have to have a black mat, right? And I would say mat, not tablecloth, mat. This is only going to work if you set it up in advance. And that means before the spectator sits down. This is only going to work if you have nice, crisp, fresh decks of cards. So meets those three criteria. Has to be on a black mat, has to be done, set up in advance, and you have to be using nice, clean, crisp decks that, that hold together well. What's the overall quality and production value of the video? It's mostly a table shot. It shows you what's in play. I think it is filmed in a different language, and there was an English dub over the top of that, because what happens is the English speaker finishes talking and the person on screen continues to talk in silence and they go on and on and on and they don't cut it. So I don't think this video needed to be 50 minutes long. It was way too long. And then the background music, the entire file for that background music was less than a minute long and it was painfully obvious when it started back over again. As far as what they teach you, you really only learn, uh, well, you get an intro, they talk about what you get they give you the method, which is the longest portion of the video, and then any repair work that you would have to do. All right, so angles. How are the angles? Uh, the performer does the dirty part, right? He switches the decks as he's gesturing. He's leaning across the table. And the way he teaches this is with two spectators. And I don't believe they give you a one spectator option because they really only teach you one routine. They don't give you any other routine options, just the one that they're teaching you. And they're doing it with two spectators. So you lean across the table to one spectator and you lean across the table to the other spectator. And in the motion of that, you're doing the switch. So that's what happens. So 
he's relying on that, plus he's also relying on being perfectly aligned with your tuck and your gimmick and it, marrying those movements together and hoping that your spectator isn't paying attention to the orientation of your deck and your tuck. Can it be inspected? Not at all. Not at all. Cards, yes. Cards are normal. Tuck box, 100% fabricated, right? Gimmicked. Um, let's talk about setup and reset. So I mentioned earlier, bad news. You can't just walk out and then just lay this on the table, okay? You have to set all this up before, you, before your spectator sits down, okay? The way I picture this is you are digging a hole in the ground, putting spikes down in that hole, and then covering the hole with leaves, and then calling your spectator over. They can't see you set the trap. You are literally setting a trap. You know, you're pulling the, the branch down with the rope and the noose and covering it with leaves and then calling your spectator over. That's what you have to do. You could not set this up in front of them. Positives. All right, so what are the positives? I've had some videos where I didn't have a negative, right? And people have asked, they said, wow, you didn't, couldn't find anything negative to say about that? There's been some, there's been a handful of, uh, of videos where I, I didn't have a negative, but I try, right? I try to have a positive and a negative for every trick, right? I try to show you both sides of the coin. I'm not gonna come out and say, this is total garbage, right? Or this is totally awesome. I try to show you a little bit of both. I, I don't have a positive for this. I don't have a positive, sorry. Uh, negatives, let's talk about negatives. First, that Sharpie marker holder, what is that? No, first, nobody's ever asked for that. And second, it doesn't exist in the real world. You just want my spectator to believe that I have a little plastic bumper sitting on the table that I use as a way for me to house or nest my Sharpie marker. It, the justification for it was never given. So you're introducing a foreign object no one's ever seen before with no justification it immediately screams out, this is suspect, right? So that, that's right out, okay? Now, to be fair, they do teach a way to do the switch without the Sharpie marker holder, and he calls it a faster method. And of the routines I saw, that faster method would be the one I would practice. If you got this, I would just watch that method that he does with one hand where he kind of like does this gesture and he swaps the two, kind of does it manually. That's the one I think is the best because the one with the Sharpie marker holder, I just can't see having a Sharpie marker holder and, and making a justification for it. Second, for this all to work, everything has to be aligned, right? Your deck has to be precisioned, squared up. The gimmick next to it has to be perfectly aligned. You have to have that perfect moment and everything has to like lock in place. So it, it, has to, it has to fall perfectly in these test conditions, which I don't think exist all the time. So I didn't, I didn't like that there had to be, you know, so much involved in making it happen. Plus in that process, IT, I you know you didn't expect me to say that, but yeah, this happens with IT on top of everything else I just mentioned, which is why you need the black mat. So m most tricks where I see that it's an IT trick where I didn't expect IT, I'm, I'm right out, I'm out. I mean, levitations, sure. I go, yeah, okay, but other tricks where they say, oh, and we did this through IT, I'm just like, nope, that's where I tap out. So seeing the weird gimmick and then IT involved, yeah, I, I, it was hard for me to, to back this. Third, the routine that they give you does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't like routines that don't make sense. You have two spectators, you give each one of them maybe half the deck, right? Or a third of the deck. 
and they can go through the cards and find the card they want. That's great because it allows them to see all the cards and know that it's coming from a shuffled deck. They get to select their own card and then you hand them each a pen and they sign it. So now we've got sign cards. And then you make it apparent that the cards go in to random places and are lost in the deck. But then the next part of the trick is you, the magician, the performer, turns the cards to face yourself and then you say, I will attempt to find your card. You know the easy way to find their card? Is look for the cards that are signed. Right? But... The performer even goes out of his way to say, this is a great place to ditch part of your gimmick. Pull your gimmick out and miscall it and say, is this your card? You don't need to do that because you know it's not signed. Of course they're gonna say no. That's a joke? That doesn't make any sense. Why would you pull a random card out and say, is this your card if it's not signed? And then, then he finds the two cards that are their cards. And then he reveals, oh, but wait, all the other cards were blank. Again, if all the cards are blank, finding their cards should be easy. <laughs> right? But you make it look hard. You make it look like, oh, oh, I think it's this one and uh, I think it's this one. So not only are the cards the only two normal cards in the deck, but they're also the only cards that are signed. And you're making it look difficult by going through the cards face up to find their card. You know a really simple way? That this, a really simple way to get around that would be your first deck should be a Bicycle Rider deck and your second deck should be a Mandolin deck. But don't tell your spectators that. And then swap them. Because then you could find their cards just by looking at the backs. They'll never see the difference because they won't know what to look for. But if you just do a casual glance, you could slide that one out and slide that one out because they're the only two rider backs in the deck and the rest of the deck is mandolin. And by the time you switch it over, they would never notice. And that way you'd never have to do that facing card problem. But it's there so that you can ditch half of your gimmick. The trick didn't make any sense. The trick didn't make any sense and the gimmick didn't make any sense. So it's really hard for me to back this or support this or get behind it. I just, even, even the way the trailer and, and our, even the way the, the tutorial was filmed, none of it seemed pro. You know, this is called a pro deck switch. Pro meaning professional. Like this would be the deck switch that professionals would use save yourself $50 and just switch the decks out in your pocket. It, you could just switch it out in your jacket pocket when you were looking for the pen and you'd be way cleaner and probably just as mysterious. And that's everything. That's everything I can say about pro deck switch. Of course, if I've answered questions for you or introduced you to something that you didn't already know something about, uh, you can always do me a favor. If I've done you a favor, you can do me a favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, and hit follow. That really helps me out a lot. Most people who watch YouTube videos never subscribe. They just watch. And so it doesn't take that much time. It's just a little button, just click it. And that encourages me to keep going and to make these videos for you day after day. And big huge thanks to Murphy's Magic Supplies. Please continue to patronize their stores. Uh, I am grateful to Murphy's. They were one of the very first magic companies who ever believed in me. Actually, they were the first. They were the first. First magic company to ever believe in me. And they started uh, this whole process, changing my channel from being a, a deck review channel to a magic review channel. So uh, I am very grateful for them as well. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.